What's up YouTube? My name is Graylin Stewart. Thanks for joining me. This is a Work Wednesdays episode where I basically just vlog about what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. So today I'm actually working on a few things. We are, what I've told you before, we're, we're kind of moving into a new, um, a new CRM and it's finally kind of up and running now. We're still working some tweaks out to where we can actually uh, start using it a little smoother, just working on different views inside of it to where it'll look more like our Podio system that me and my whole team is used to. But um, so the title of the video is showing you thumbs down because we got another deal busted. So let me tell you a little bit about this. So this property is it's in a smaller town that we actually have on the MLS. So technically it's a hotel deal um, because it is listed on the MLS right now but so this deal we got uh, a couple of months back and we listed it we found a buyer about um, you know about a month and a half or about a month ago somewhere in that time period but we were actually supposed to close on this um, and the buyer actually backed out on the day of closing now this is an MLS cash buyer okay because it is a distressed property but it's worth about three hundred thousand dollars, or even a little higher, low threes for sure. Uh, once it's all fixed up, but um, we were selling it. We had it listed for one hundred and fifty. Of course, we had some lowball offers. Went back and forth with some people, but we just wanted to move the deal. So um, we had it uh, actually assigned. No, not assigned, but we had it to sell. Uh, of course, we double close when we do MLS deals. Um, so we had it for sale for one hundred and fifty. We agreed to 105 after some back and forth, but it's completely as is, no contingencies, you know, all the normal things that you would do for a wholesale deal um, is, is kind of the stipulations that we had on this property. So um, the buyer backed out the day of closing um, because I guess it was they're from California. They flew in to check it out, to do their final walkthrough and that kind of thing and to sign documents in person, I guess. But they backed out um, just saying that, you know, it was worse than we said and all these things, which is not true. They actually have their boots on the ground, which is their realtor, check everything out. We've got tons of videos, tons of pictures. Their realtor had FaceTime, you know, everything. Uh, so anyways, they backed out. We weren't gonna give them earnest money back, but we went ahead and did it because it was like a fight for a while, you know, and we just needed to, to have the property active again so it wasn't uh, showing as pending on the MLS because we just wanted to sell the thing. So obviously they were backing out, nothing we could do about that. So we moved on. I went ahead and signed the release so they can get their money back even though they didn't deserve it because we were completely upfront with them. They knew exactly what they were getting into. Um, so anyways, I didn't want to fight it and mess with it. So we released it, got another contract on it uh, like a week later and it was actually better, you know, because this contract was for 120. So it's even better. And in the meantime, I actually renegotiated with a seller. So I typically do most of the renegotiating in my company. Not all of it, but I like to do it because I'm good at it and I can usually get it a lot lower. But in this case, I got a $10,000 reduction on the deal um, and we're selling it for 15 more. So we're actually gonna make like 55 grand on this deal. But anyways, so this buyer is now wanting to cancel on us which is really strange because just all of a sudden like at midnight my disposition manager gets an email from the other realtor uh, with just a release no explanation no phone call didn't even explain in the email what was going on it just simply had a release attached to it that the buyer was wanting us to release their earnest money which was really weird and i'm definitely not releasing this one um, because they 100 percent knew what they were getting into uh, with like I said multiple pictures multiple videos their realtor, you know Knew everything they knew everything they even signed our counter offer with them foregoing and forfeiting all contingencies, you know um, that a normal real estate contract shows uh, And they agreed to that to a non-refundable five thousand dollars. So um, definitely not releasing it, but we did get a message earlier this morning um, uh, my my uh, dispo manager got a message from their realtor saying that they wanted to look at it again today. So that's good news, hopefully. Um, but in the meantime, you know, we're just considering this busted and trying to find another buyer. But 
hopefully it'll stay intact. You never know. But, um, you know, we did have some other deals that kind of got busted, but trying to save some of those, you know, and deals bust for different reasons. Usually, um, it's reasons that we can't control uh, because we do everything in our power to do everything correctly uh, so that there's there's no reason that a deal busts on our end. It's usually title issues um, or, you know, buyer issues or seller issues, um, but it's never our issues, which is good news uh, because we always follow through with what we say we're going to do. So that's the good part. Um, and another thing is, uh, you know, we I actually renegotiated another deal that we have uh, that we're just wholesaling. So this deal we actually got for 82000 It's in a smaller area. But the ARV on this house is like 130. So, you know, if you just think half of that, we're in the money, 75, we got it for 82, you know, it's a pretty good deal. Um, but once my dispo manager actually went out there, um, she she got pictures and videos and all that thing. And it just, it, it was just worse condition than we thought, than they had told us. So she actually called them herself to renegotiate just and explain to them like, hey, this isn't what you said it was. Uh, basically, and the seller agreed to go to forty thousand dollars. So, so she got it for less than half of our original price at eighty-two, and eighty-two was a decent deal. But it is a smaller town; it'd be harder to to sell, um, and it was in worse condition than than they told us. So, she got it for less than half of what our original deal was. But anyways, I started looking deeper into the pictures, deeper into the comps, and it's a small town. So it's still, even at 40, it's too risky. So I called the seller myself to renegotiate that deal again, and I got her to agree for 20. So we had it for 82, dispo manager got it to 40, and then I called and got it to 20. So now we have a $130,000 ARV uh, for 20 grand. And I mean, it probably needs some decent work, but if you're gonna use it as a rental, I could probably do it for 20 to 25 grand. Uh, but if you're wanting to flip it, I mean, it, it needs a good 50, probably. But either way, that's a smoking deal. So I'm actually considering uh, if we don't get a buyer for this soon, I'll probably take this one down myself because I do actually have two rentals in this town uh, that we got this deal in. So, you know, it's, it's worth it for me because at the end of the day, I could always refinance that. Technically, I could probably get, you know, like a hundred grand on a refi. Um, I wouldn't do that because I don't like to you know, max out at like 80% or whatever, like some investors do and that's okay. But um, I rather have a bunch of equity still, but I would like to get my money back. So let's just say I bought it for 20, I put 25 into it, plus closing costs or whatever. So I'm just all in for 50. Uh, I might put, a, I might go ahead and put a, a what do you call it? <laughs> a mortgage on it for um, like 65. Because, uh, you know, I typically end up buying these properties for cash, which I know is not the smartest way to do it because your cash can be used to leverage, you know, other things and do other things with it. But um, it's just faster and easier to get it done. So I do need more private money. So don't get me wrong. I'd rather use other people's money for sure. Um, but, you know, I don't have tons and tons of that lined up like I should. There's just so many, only so much time in a day. So I do need to work and focus on that more just so I can use other people's money every single time. But in the meantime, I would probably just close it with cash, refi it for 65, so I get all my money back with with everything, uh, you know, if I was all in for 50. Plus I would get 15,000 um, completely tax-free because that's in the loan. So I'd end up kind of getting our, you know, our wholesale fee, if you want to call it that. Uh, so that's the smarter way to do it, you know, technically. If you can keep a house, it's, it's usually better, uh, especially if you source to the deal, you'll end up getting your wholesale fee, but it would be tax free and you keep the asset and it increases your net worth. So it's like a win, win, win all the way around. So in this scenario, if we were to wholesale it, yeah, we might make 15 or 20 grand, but then, then our company is taxed, you know, probably 40% on that. Um, so, and then by the time you pay everybody, you know, it's, it's not as smart to do that um, if you can keep it because then I have the, I would have the long-term rental um, and I can that house is like 2,200 square feet 
I could definitely get probably $1,400 a month on that because I have two other rentals there. They're a three bed, one bath that I get uh, 980 on one and 1160 on the other. Um, and this house is twice as big. So I know I could probably get 14 to 1500 somewhere in that ballpark. So if I refight it out, let's say my payment's 500 and taxes and insurance another 100. So I'm in it for 600. And if I can get even 1200, I'm doubling. So I'm getting 600 cash flow, but I know I can get more than 12 because I'm getting almost 12 on half the size. And this house is actually in a better area as that as well. So anyways, what I'm saying is it's smarter to keep your house if you can. Obviously, um, I could close on it, get all my money back, make $15,000 wholesale fee, but tax free this time because it's in the loan. Um, and then I still would have, if, I, if I'm if i on for 65, I still have, what is that? I don't know, 80,000 in equity. So it increases my net worth by another 80 grand which gives you more leverage when you're trying to get other loans. And we got our wholesale fee, but it's tax-free this time. And I've got a cash, cash flow in property um, at least $600 per month forever. So that's probably the route I'll go. But anyways, didn't mean to ramble on, so we've got a couple of good deals uh, going. And another house in that same town, by the way, um, I just got a tenant buyer because I sell most things on rent to own just so I'm not a landlord. Um, tenant buyer on a house that I'm all in for like 25 grand or so and it's completely all cash I'm not gonna put a mortgage on it because there's don't really need to um, but the ARV on that house is 95 I sold it for 95 on rent to own uh, they gave me seven grand down plus it's 1160 per month that's that house so that's a hundred percent cash flow almost because my taxes and insurance are about 110 so over like a thousand fifty per month or so is about what the cash flow is, and um, they gave me eight grand down, so I got a third or a quarter of my money back already. I'll get all my money back within a year that I've got into the house, and I'll make uh, you know a thousand fifty or so cash flow per month forever on that. Not forever, for fifteen years because it is a fifteen year mortgage. Um, but at the same time, most people don't fulfill. You know, these rent-to-owns, they end up changing their mind or whatever. Uh, so most likely, uh, I hope they stay because that's ultimately what I want. Um, you know, most people don't like rent-to-own because your cash flow ends at some point, which is fine in theory because if that's all you have is just, so I have like 25 rentals right now. So that if that's all I ever had, then yeah, all of my cash flow would end in 15 years if they all fulfilled the note, right? But, and I hope they all do. I'm cool with that. But if they don't, I can get down payments and cash flow again. But if they do, it's not like I'm going to stop with these 25. I'm going to keep buying houses month after month, year after year. So, you know, 15-year notes will always end. And some of my notes are 30 years because I give the buyers the option, which whichever way they want to go. So that's kind of my two cents. I'm never going to stop buying houses. So my cash flow is never going to end as far as on these notes that are going to end eventually. I'm sure those notes will end, but... I'm always going to have other ones. So anyways, hopefully that made sense. But anyway, yeah. So bad news. Second deal, deal busted on this one particular house. But hopefully we'll find another buyer or my dispo manager will find a way to keep our second deal intact and actually not bust is the goal. So anyways, thanks for sticking around and watch me ramble on this vlog. But um, definitely uh, if you like this content, if you learned anything, give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, Give me a thumbs down. I'm okay with that too. Drop me a comment if you got anything to say. I reply to all comments myself for sure. Um, and hit me up on social media if you want to be friends or whatever. Um, and uh, if you stuck around this long, please subscribe if you haven't already. I'd appreciate it. And otherwise, I'll see you guys in future videos. Thanks a lot.